Toronto first look at them on the new map. Yeah, but every stage so far, the game has changed. And now Toronto Ultra have to figure out how they're going to expand their map pool, expand their, their maps in general when you talk about the HP. So you got to throw the six star right off the rip. Well, we have seen Atlanta face play this one time. It was versus Optic Texas. They fell short 250 to 211, but you best believe the adjustments are bound to come in for Atlanta. Yeah, getting on top of that, we'll talk about the Rios. Atlanta, so good on that map. Yeah. So definitely feels like this map right here for a first go for Toronto. Almost is a must-win scenario. Really, 50-50 battle over the top of the first hard point. Only six seconds of collected time totaled. And Atlanta will do the work to kind of get some of the scrap. But on rotation, Toronto already set up looking towards new. Yeah, they're already going to be set up probably for the next hill, but this is where you have to make up for it because Atlanta phase, they did a great job, at least versus Optic Texas, doing a great job at this P1, but keeping P2 contested all the way to the very end. You can already see the routes coming in out of Simp, coming in out of Draza, taking their sweet time working their way around Waterside, but you also have players going on a deep pitch. So the first hill is going to go to Atlanta, but now where does Toronto spawn? They're all the way across the map. Atlanta are coming from every angle, but that's why you have Kleenex here to find a double to at least neutralize it for a little bit. Oh, what a great route. The stun comes in from the front door. Kleenex gets a freebie. And Toronto now from the front. Rebreak the hard point, if you want to call it a break in the first place from Atlanta. Kleenex still not giving away this back staircase on four in a row. Last attempt here for Atlanta, you'd think. But the thing is, they're kind of being spawn trapped here in a way, Jay. I mean, they're still spawning backside stairs. Kleenex on five. Pistol out looking for number six. Will not have a chance to use it as Atlanta will now look towards rotation. Oh, that's big stuff, too, because Atlanta was spawning everywhere. You had a couple close spawns over towards P2. Two players spawned over towards P3. And at least BZ and Draza trying to hold down this rotation over towards the next. But at least for now, it's still going to be contested. Kleenex again finds a big double to at least alleviate some pressure for Toronto Ultra to make this rotation a little bit easier. But Abizi's knowing that those spawns are still going to be in towards the back end. And this is a hill that Atlanta faced struggled versus out the Texas. So far, they're trying to hold it from the front. Yeah, and they're doing a really nice job of it. There was one moment where Scrap spawns a bit further out, but Atlanta still picks up on it. Lead starting to grow here for FaZe. Sam holding on to the side door. Freebie on towards Kleenex. Trades lot there at all for Toronto. Last one in the back door is inside. He gets, gets overwhelmed. So 50 points plus now for Atlanta. Looking good for this back 30 as Ultra has to hit from the front again. Yeah, this is looking like a full 64 Atlanta. They were the team at least holding down from the front end, but they clutched up with all the gunfights. Spawned all, spawn all of Toronto Ultra out towards the water side. And now with only 20 seconds, left you have to cut your losses you're gonna find yourself down by 50 but you're going into a p4 money hill where this can get you right back into this game you just yeah. have to read the initial push coming in from atlanta because they're not going straight from the statue they're working their way all the way around through p5 yes yeah, so keep your eye on envoy that was one of the players to watch here for the desk he is going to be the first one responsible for getting a read long range shots towards the bz good sem text to replace that utility and then shots towards Zellian, but he will be taken down. The read is in, though. Toronto, can they find this from Insight's perspective here in the kitchen? First two, not going to get the second. Okay, Atlanta now from the back, working with the spawns, a chance to break from the high ground. Yeah, but this still isn't easy to do, especially at this. You have to drop down, jump out of the window, or work your way through a bulletproof door. And Scrap finds that kill alongside Kleenex, so they still are coming out on top in the trade fight. Only 30 kill alongside Kleenex, so they still are coming out on top in the trade fight. Only 30 seconds remaining here at P4. All of Atlanta just trying to funnel their way through the back end, and every single time Kleenex did it, just cut them down one by one. I mean, he's winning these gunfights on some unreal angles. So Ultra, maybe get more than you would have expected considering the quick flip of the spawns from FaZe. Scrap time will go the way of Atlanta. And now the rotation heads back over towards the pool. Toronto here first, but draws a decent angle for him. Deals with the first, but the help from inside keeps Kleenex alive a little while longer. But regardless, it is still Toronto with the last man standing, and they will open up the new hard point. Yeah, now it turns to a one-on-one, -on -one, though. So if you are inside, you just got to try to swim as long as you possibly can. Wait for your teammates to get close to you. Those first two bursts are not going to connect from the Renetti out of a BZ. But the route is still going to be great. His teammates are slank through top mid. BZ wins his one-on-one -on -one through bottom in the water. And that's going to be a successful break coming in from Atlanta phase with 40 seconds still on this hill. Yeah, the spawns for Toronto are very spread from the front. Some players having to go through the middle of the map here. Draza holding over the top of this isolated plant inside the pool. Does well. Teammates picking up right as soon as he has to go into the depths of the water. And that is absolute perfect from Atlanta. Oh, man, I'll tell you, Jay, we talked about how they played Optic on this map. It was very 50-50, but here it looks like they've got a really solid handle on some of these real chaotic points. Yeah, the biggest thing versus Optic Texas, they couldn't find success on breaking, but the way that they are playing and setting up their breaks, they're taking these long routes. They're taking their sweet time. They're using crossfires to the best of their ability to find some successful time. 
At the end of that P4, they were only up by 30, 40 points. Now they're up by 70. This game has been blown wide open, and we're back to the P1 where Atlanta Phaser found three in the feed. Last player is going to be over towards the set, which is going to be Scrap, but he's not going to contest it. He's just going to allow Atlanta Phaser to, to continuously grow this lead. Well, front staircase hit is the only ah, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and Draza just pushes right through. No worries for the burst pistol. Able to find himself the double, and now he locks down everything at this front lobby. Almost gets a little lineup collateral as he rotates to two as well. That could have been deadly for Toronto, but with this, a chance for them to get back into the hard point, at least neutralized for a time. But boy, I'll tell you, Jay, they need to win this rotation, and luckily enough, Insight is there first towards P2. But you see those spawns right there from Simp. He's going to get the close spawn over towards P4 so they can work their way around the back end with Envoy spawning all the way at P3. So they now know Atlanta phase are on the backside. We have to try to contest this P1, but also win some gunfights through their wow. front and sell him doing what he does best. A little body shooting to make sure he lets Kleenex know I love you a little bit too much, but they are currently up by 90 and the lead just keeps on getting bigger because they are just a step ahead right now in this HP. Yeah, every rotation has been so Oh, yeah, clean. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all know about it. Not even doing it on kills he finds. So I'll tell you, Atlanta feeling pretty confident at the moment. Kleenex from the side door nearly finds himself too. The drop down will be the next point of ingress of BZ almost turns and snaps for a second, but spawns are out and Toronto will secure the break. That's a big break because you're already down by 100 points. You have to start making up some good time. And with only 30 seconds remaining here at P2, you best believe Atlanta Fays are going to contest the hell out of it through the front end because they know that P3 is going to be a money hill. As long as you flood through the front, you're consistently going to spawn in towards the back. We just can't allow Envoy to earn himself a cruise miss. So you're able to shut him down off of that streak. But with only 15 seconds left, Atlanta doing a great job just applying pressure over towards Waterside, knowing that they have the spawns for next. I mean, the thing is, FaZe are really committed here towards this old time at P2. Like you said, the spawns are decent, but they're going to have to put the response together here. Let's listen in with Atlanta FaZe as they try to read this next hit from Ultra. Hey, 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 hey. I have my I got the One can be in line. I have my no 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 MC is front. They're in the back. I got I'm going to grab that. I think I got to me. In the back. What are they? I better put him. Light to the winner. Little light, still. Last guy. Kill the time. Light the time. Time. Kill the 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 What's there, dude? Nice. Good fucking shit. Nice. Lock in the back. I'm blocking the back. I'm blocking the back. Oh my god. I'm blocking the back. I don't want this. Listen, I spawned down. I think they might be back in the back. No, I blocked out the back. I don't even know. I don't know. I think. One shot. It's a really good time. This is the game. This time is the game. We should play it. We should play it. I'm out. 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 i am out 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 Master class from Atlanta face and you can even hear the small talk a little bit of like what are these guys doing a little more of a BZ kind of being the leader the general saying hey this old time will essentially guarantee the game and allow us to have a little bit more fun here as Atlanta phase will be 10 seconds away from the win trying to break it open from the front in Toronto Jay I'll tell you they just look a little lost on the map oh yeah they are just not ready for this pressure that Atlanta phase are going to set off the rip on six star as that is going to be number one going in favor of Atlanta phase and this is the only thing that really scares me because every time I watch Atlanta play, they're just getting better and better. The map pool is starting to get extended. And now for Toronto Ultra, with them losing maps like Invasion, with them lose, losing maps like, like Skid Row, these maps, you have to figure at least one of them out because you're great at sub base. You're 6-0, but Atlanta don't play that. Karachi, yeah. it could be a square up. Rio, that's Atlanta's favorite map. You have to figure out another HP to try to square up against Atlanta phase. And based off of that map, number one, six star might not be it. No, it definitely didn't look good. Uh, it really, at any moment in time, a couple of the moments early where it felt kind of 50-50, both teams trying to toggle for control. But yeah, you could definitely tell the rotations, especially across the map for FaZe were so much more direct. Like the middle yep. of the map just always felt like it was in the pressure and control of Atlanta FaZe where Toronto was taking all these super long routes through pool, through the sky bridge, just not where you want to be. And also on top of that, the combined 27 and what is that? 51 from Envoy and Insight. Not great news in terms of uh, two of your key players for Toronto in this head to head.
Yeah, it's just tough when you're losing a majority of your rotations, when you're not trading effectively on the hills that you were properly set up with because the routes that Atlanta Pays are hitting. Like, you can already see the adjustments they've had, they have made since they played Optic Texas. I know it was Draz who had him. He was just playing way too damn fast versus Optic. But this game, he's slowly working with his teammates. Yeah. Working off the rotations. Him and Selium are side by side, figuring out which angles need to be watched. Because that guy puts up 5,400 damage. Doesn't need a cruise miss or anything like that. It was just simply teamwork outclassing Toronto Ultra. When you have a rep already underneath your belt versus a team like Optic Texas, you best believe the next time that they come in, they're going to be a lot more polished. And they showed it from start to finish of that game one. Yeah, absolutely the case. And really, it was what? Just Kleenex, who kind of was the catalyst for Toronto yep. to find the majority of their time. But otherwise, the macro of the squad just not quite there. And the extra feeling saucy from Selium, not once, but twice, not even on his own kills. I think that says a lot about how Atlanta collectively is coming into this matchup. And, you know, again, the trash talk that's been going back and forth, whether it be on the microphone or on Twitter, it's been uh, pretty heavy loaded. And I'm sure a lot of people in the community have sided with one player or another, maybe in one team or the other in this matchup. But that really did feel like in this series, based on the history of what we've gotten from Atlanta, that was a map that Toronto really needed to find. And they never were really ever in it. Yeah, they, they just couldn't find any success from start to finish of that game. You just take a look at the game flow. Like, it was it was basically tied at P2. But everything after that was all of Atlanta phase. Winning rotation, winning breaks, setting them up properly to not allow teams like Toronto Ultra to set up properly for that P3. Or even that P4, where you're usually seeing a lot of success when you come to that time. They were just yeah. hitting long routes, making sure that they were winning one-on-ones, blocking certain spawns. Like, that was just perfection right there from Atlanta phase in map number one. And now you're going into a real search and destroy where these guys do have history. They went all the way to around 11. But I swear, for anyone who plays real search and destroy, specifically in rank, you always think that this map is tend to be really, really fast paced. Like we got to go. Every single round has to be done in the first 30 to 45 seconds. But with the last two times that these guys messed up, it was round 11 and it was about a 25 minute Rio search and destroy, which threw it me off wild. guard. It's we're talking about. We're going show and face here. We're rotating back. We're going back. We're doing this. A whole bunch of mind games between both of these two teams. So if you're Toronto Ultra, you have to be prepared for it this time around. And that's the really bizarre and maybe most peculiar thing because when we looked at this Atlanta team throughout Major 1, whether it be qualifiers or the Major itself, the search and destroy was maybe not as clean as we would have expected based on the history of the roster kind of collectively. In particular, in this matchup, they had lost 6-1 and 6-2 before they got to that Rio, which it really did feel like going into Major 2 qualifiers, the polish of the search and destroy was pretty extraordinary. I yeah. mean, most of their losses were round 10 or beyond, if they lost at all, where most of their wins were like six twos, six threes. I mean, they were absolutely dominating people. So yeah, you get into this Rio search and destroy. This has been not only one of Atlanta Phase's best map mode combinations in this series, but at the same rate, Ultra really haven't shown us enough conviction here, including an 06 loss to the Vegas lead to the major two qualifiers, which is one of the more recent plays before they played Phase on this map. And the good thing, at least if you're Toronto Ultra, is that you're the team on the attacking side first because everything for Atlanta on their attacking side is basically perfection. So if you are Ultra, you have to figure out how you're going to find an opening in that first blood column because that's where Atlanta Faze usually find a lot of success. But it was a four stack over towards A. They're going to be uh -huh. a little bit late off this rotation before we re retake over towards B site now. Bomb does get planted, though. Problem is, look how quick the SMGs just burst right through. A little delayed hit, and then all of a sudden, they're right in your face. Scrap, right over towards bridge side. Abizi will give that information over to Draza. Simp also pushing forward, has no worries dealing with the late lurk of insight, and it's a flawless first round for FaZe. That's just way too easy, man. We're talking about Simp just walking his way up through the Eskies, finds a double to also takes down the bomb carry, and then takes full map control through top mid. And the last two players from Ultra, but just not close to the play or just simply outnumbered. As Atlanta Faze come out in the round number one and punch them straight in the jaw. As they take round number one, now they're going to the attacking side where this is where it gets scary because Atlanta Faze, believe it or not, Alan, are 93% chance at opening with the first blood. And when they find the first blood, it turns into about an 85% chance at winning the round on this attacking yeah. side. So if you are ultra, this is where you have to stand strong. Yeah, it's it's so darn efficient. That's been kind of the key for their search and destroy really on the year. You look across any statistic and they're probably top three just about everywhere. So trophy system has been earned. Atlanta fans can use it as a chance to get immediate control of top. And with that, Bob will be planted. And if you're ultra, 
how do you try to recontest this? Scrap is really outside the play. Beans is not going to give him the time of day. And he guess you kind of have to look to Envoy to be the first guy up. And he's the smoke here. So you got to put this thing down in a nice place. Kind of figure out how Atlanta Fans are setting up around this site. It's already been 15 seconds knife off the game clock. You're at least able to get some info onto a BZ, I but mean, Hitman Celium already set up with the crossfires, putting in this two kills. They're just not giving them a look at a gunfight. It's just shoulders here, shoulders there. Look at me, look at him. I mean, oh my goodness. Oh my, oh my goodness. This has been two flawless rounds of search out of Atlanta phase early. Not what you want if you're an Ultra fan. All right, well, I'm hoping that Ultra have done some of their homework because if the only way you're basically going to shut down Atlanta phase on this map is shutting down that B pressure because only 13% of the time they are planning over towards A. 56% of the time, they are playing over towards B. So if you can control top mid on your defensive side and force them to be a little bit uncomfortable over towards that A site, that might be your recipe to success. But if you're not just going to allow them to work the bomb plant for free and play the post plant, yeah, GG. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And it's just the efficiency around the utility and the trophies in these first two rounds for Atlanta. Should be matched this time. Is Toronto this time going to go very aggressively right up mid and beyond it? They're going to clear off stairs and eskies at the same time. This will delay the plant just a touch, but Atlanta are aware of this. Here comes the retake attempt over towards Eskies, and first blood again gets tallied. Abizi just hits the deck. Kleenex on the corner at stairs, but everyone's back to full regen, and Abizi clears it. Oh, are man. Are you kidding me? It's like he knows already. Now it's instantly a 4v2. Another 4v2 for Toronto Ultra. Forced to try to clutch on up. Positioning now, no one on Envoy. Most likely gain that info as well, that he is going to be the bomb carrier. But you can see everybody else from Atlanta phase working their way around the deep pinch and Draza just being the island player holding the overextension. Wow. It's absolute poetry to this point. And phase just not going to give away their advantages. Never have, never will. Envoy, last one left, just has to try to force some sort of an engagement and does well to collect one plus damage on the other, but it's not really plausible to think he was had a realistic chance at a 1v4 situation. Wow. That's a blinding start for Atlanta. And that's just a great defensive setup right there from Atlanta. You show face at least through the bottom side of the Eskies, get no tax to be hit from Toronto Ultra. You waste all of them if you are Atlanta to make sure they're not aggressively pushing towards A. But then once you're counting the stuns, the nays coming through top mid, you are getting a a real good evaluation of how many players are sitting towards top mid. And Toronto Ultra, they got the successful bomb plant first go around, but the post plant wasn't the best. So this time they tried to send it down to Eskies and Atlanta phase made them pay for it. And now Simp has a cruise missile. Yeah, not good. <laughs> I mean, it's the easy way of evaluating that. Uh, okay, something has to change right here right now if you're Ultra. And it may need to start with just finding kills. Only two eliminations at this point. And now FaZe are going to kind of feel things out over towards the A site. A little nervy here for Ultra, obviously not wanting to step outside in the face of a cruise missile, but you may not have an option here. You may have to try to make some sort of a quick play just to deny this plant. At least they haven't allowed any players from Atlanta face to get past that 50 yard line. So they're still going to be working from their base, but here comes the cruise missile. Going to invest it at 3-0. You're going to back down the players from Ultra, either in towards garage or towards the boxes area. But do they decide to work the objective or play the kills? Oh, I mean, they bait out Scrap. He's trying to check to see if there's a plant right on top Hello. of the cruise. It never happened. And now Abizi creates a secondary problem right down. Oh, the man. Are we kidding me? I mean, did he blow oh. the floor tiles? What is happening? Ah, oh, man, <laughs> this is nasty. Like, these guys are just playing next level Call of Duty. I know Atlanta Phase have been the organization on top for the last couple of years, but the way that they are playing right now versus Ultra, it's like they have a little bit of extra fire underneath their belt. Because obviously we know it's a lot of chirping on the other side. This match is full of dogs, but right now Atlanta Phase are doing a majority, basically all the barking so far, up 4 0. Jeez Louise. And they're barking not needed. I mean, this is casual right now for Atlanta. Just chilling. Feet kicked up, I mean, Alan. <laughs> legitimately outplayed in every form of Call of Duty at the moment. Nade's even landing here off the rip as Sim holds on to his seven spree now. Bomb still looking to get planted. The check from Abizi pushes him off. Can't confirm the kill. Follow-up utility, though, from Toronto doesn't really affect this at all. So defensively, Abizi could just hang out. And now he's got a cruise missile. I mean, what? What are we watching? I don't know, man. I don't know what the hell is going on. But Ultra now forced to try to clutch up in the 3v4. The bomb just successfully get planted over towards B. 
But now everyone from Atlanta Faze working on that deep pitch. Selling with the pistol, a little bit of extra shots onto Insight, makes it a 4v2. Now a 4v1, all left up to scrap. Okay, a couple of kills come through, but I mean, so what? Who cares? What, <laughs> that's legitimately the only words that could come through. It's just like, cool, and like, <laughs> wow, 5-0 after a smackdown on the hard point this is looking abusive and this ain't no we're testing maps kind of series no this is a straight up all right we're trying to see if we can beat these guys the last time we played them went all the way to around 11 on rio but atlanta phase time and time again are always going to spawn into their next series a lot better than the previous as two hp left like these guys aren't losing gunfights they aren't making any damn mistakes you got a cruise yeah, missile in your back pocket for a bz you're about to close out in a 6-0 if you use it correctly here wow did not think we were gonna get this one we've had a couple of these where we thought it was gonna be banger top tier matchups but ends up being one-sided maybe none more expressive of that than this one here toronto looking to get aggressive down mid but i mean again it's being checked it's being watched abizi just shows himself and that's enough for ultra to say we can't go any further and now the cruise missile gets called play goes back over towards a and surely i mean atlanta are sitting here saying yep they have to be playing this off the pinch information in the read is there but this is going to be another free plan if atlanta want it oh they don't decide to work for it though they're trying to push that to at least isolate the player who was on the opposing side but he's going to regroup with his teammates now it's on a BZ. Simply just plays life, working his way back through the spawn while his teammates are pushing through the base. And I don't know if Toronto Ultra is going to be able to get a read on this because there's only 35 seconds left. Eventually, Atlanta got to start to get objective. Well, the thing about it is I, you have to imagine that Toronto is still hard leaning towards they got to be around A, setting yeah. up some sort of a post plan. Scrap will turn, maybe gets a read on something, but BZ is just lurking. So he finds himself a one for one. Bob now a bit more urgency needs to be planted. Scrap able to kind of dissuade the initial and he finds himself too. Okay, there is a heartbeat. Ultra find themselves around on the board. Oh, there it is. Even with the cruise missile, everything that was getting thrown at you in that final round. Able to withstand that pressure from the cruise missile, keep it into a 3v3, isolate and at least trade effectively onto a BZ. And then Scrap was able to get the read on where the pressure was coming in, finds the timing through top bridge and Finds the double to close out the round. So finally, Ultra able to stop the bleeding, but for how long? Because now you're going back on the attacking side where Atlanta phase every single time they have had a counter to what you were trying to get done. Yep. And there's just not a lot of time to flip that around to be so convincing that phase feel panicked. So Ultra will just kind of go to a pretty heavy-handed attack over towards B. Once again, trying to find the phase defenders beforehand, and it's just not working out. You're not going to get this man cleanly. Abizi now back over to Eskies. Scrap on the hunt. Selium there to help, and it's a free first blood turned into a 4v3 situation. Ultra trying to force a post plant. And now you just have to at least find one kill if you are Ultra, or at least stall out a lot of that game clock to allow Insight to work his way around this long pinch. And everyone from Atlanta Fae is attacking through the bridge side. Kleenex is going to have his hands full. Oh, wow. Does he ever? Plus, the follow-up on the other side draws it just kind of by himself. Did they know how many players are here? Doesn't seem to. Scrap has no choice but to take the pistol fight. Gets completely caught off guard. And it is straight dominance from Atlanta Phase 6-1. And yep, Ultra need to walk that one off badly. And that is definitely one of the most demoralizing search and destroys I've seen in quite some time. Because Toronto Ultra had multiple rounds where they had full top mid control. But the squad that they are playing against on the opposing side, they're just thinking, even with this map control, we can't think about this objective. We cannot start this attacking round properly if we do not open up with the first blood. And every single time that they tried to push through, catch Atlanta face off guard, they were prepared for it. Like, that's just next level plays, next level search to destroy from Atlanta face from start to finish. Sip and Ibiza obviously set the tone. You go 10 non-traded kills, seven non-traded kills, two cruise missiles to work with. But look at the first bloods. Look at that, Helen. That is seven all in favor of Atlanta face. You're simply not going to find success if you're not taking them down first. These are some stupid numbers. Everyone over a thousand damage for FaZe wow. in a seven round game, 11 and one for BZ. I mean, no one died. That's kind of the moral of this entire map of search and destroy is that FaZe just was untouchable, legitimately in every form of the word. So 
It has been nothing but an Atlanta phase spotlight to this point. Invasion control up next. That is really the only major map that we have between both these two teams where we can look at some history to say, okay, maybe there are chances here, but it's still not an easy frame up to think about how Toronto can pull reverse speed, which is what they need to back up some of the talk that's been had on the social media world. We'll head over to a break and we've got invasion control to come back. Atlanta phase all over the series at this point. Ultra looking to regain headed into one of their major matchups before their major. We'll be back after this. Upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. Welcome back, everybody. And well, <laughs> if you haven't uh, watched the first two maps, you're seeing everything right here. It has been nothing but Atlanta and nothing but a little bit extra almost after every single kill. Toronto has not showed much in terms of even signs of life. After the map two lost, Jay, everyone out of the camera picture already. Take a lap, get some water, do something. But they do look more locked in as we head to an invasion control. I just don't know what the hell they were doing in that commercial break because obviously nothing is working. 
Atlanta phase have always been bad in the U.S. Search and Destroy. The only thing that you really had the advantage over them is in the HPs because now we're going into a control where Atlanta phase, even in the series that they have lost to Toronto Ultra, this is the only mode that they have successfully been undefeated versus this roster. So 3-0 so far in the season. You're already up 2-0 in this series. And now you have a potential to 3-0 Ultra <laughs> again? Okay, let's see some, Atlanta. Yeah, this says a lot. Worst mode, none. Just exactly. Number one. exactly. Literally number one across the board in just about every statistic and just about every single metric, at least at the back row level. It's been an untouchable moment, really, through and through. Moments of sweat, sure. I think in particular, you kind of saw it in the hard points in that series with Optic, but I mean, everything else has been cool, calm, and collected so far for the Atlanta phase boys. And now they start things up on offense. Scrap, good first blood immediately through mid map. So this focus for phase is gonna be pretty well telegraphed that it's all headed towards A, and Toronto are well in place for the defense of it. Yeah, it's good stuff to know where the pressure's coming in early on. You usually don't see a lot of teams nowadays being super aggressive over towards A because if you lose those initial fights, you're instantly put into a trap, but we're talking about Atlanta phase. There's no way how you're going to be able to trap them for that long as they already find themselves up aggressive in towards. Mannequin Sip finds a double, and that's going to now be three dead in the feed. The first push wasn't good enough. Here comes the second as that first segment is about to get completed A. It's just wild that Atlanta still finds the not just opportunity, but the success to get back to A with the yep. never even touch of the B zone. I mean, they're just literally saying we can get away with whatever the hell we want. And right now they're getting away with it. First stick of progress in. Trades decent. Abizi, one of the last ones left standing. Doesn't know which doorway to fight. And that will be enough for Toronto to reclaim control and deplete the progress here in the second tick. And that's already job well done if you are Atlanta phase. You got shut down in your first push, but your second push was even better. So at least earn one segment over towards A. Now you rotate back over towards B. You're going to get this one out of the way with ease. As that first segment is about to be complete. You see the way that Toronto Ultra are playing it. They're more focused on keeping them trapped here. Scrap is not going to go for any deep pinches. He's not going to try to shut them down off of this B point. They're going to play a minute and 50 second defense over towards A. Yeah, it's just, it feels a little too early to chalk, especially considering there really wasn't much defensive pressure ever yep. established over towards the B zone. And at the same rate, you've got Atlanta winning over the middle of the map just a touch at least if easy slips back in towards cafe off the regen has kleenex damaged up easy follow-up and now you've got a five life advantage 60 seconds still not extra tatted with the b tally yet but it will be tagged on and if easy is already making problems happen over towards a quick follow-up here for toronto but boy they need to regain the middle of the map badly yeah and there's a minute 45 left and atlanta phase currently finds himself up by three lives so if you are ultra you have to dominate that right side of the street and unfortunately kleenex sitting at 0 and 6 he has to spawn in if you want to try to shut down Atlanta phase with the aggression that they have been showing so far in this round number one. But still up by three lives, maintaining a little bit of mid-map control. Is trying to allow the teammates to work up, find a couple kills in sync to eventually work the point. Yeah, really good defensive setup here, though, for Ultra at the moment. Not a lot of room for phase to work with. Little chase down from Scrap, who gets absolutely destroyed by Simp. And now, all of a sudden, here comes Atlanta on the motion towards A once again. Abizi pushing right through, open and broken. And, well, Avonvoy gets the double with the pistol. But problem is, there are two phase members over towards the A zone. They're going to stack it. Second to progress, looking pretty darn likely. Oh, until one lat challenge comes out. And, no, that second tick is not fully completed. And with Scrap getting on, he will work on depleting it. Still a life advantage, though, for phase. Yeah, if you're Atlanta phase, you definitely want to get that second set segment done before you go for that peak but you're still up in the lives remaining column up by three you know where inside is and we can find this trade onto the as and d point you can still take a majority of mid map control but this is where ultra has to bite down they have to get ready yeah, for this yeah. pressure because 45 seconds left two people drop you have no more respawns yeah absolutely the case and any kill from kleenex would be a good one here considering where the lives are at the moment not a great start obviously but find yourself one or two and you'll feel like, okay, we saved this round just a touch. Scrap, long range shots. Nope, not gonna happen. Team shots are too good. Now Kleenex may have to be forced to take an engagement here as the stack from Atlanta is looking decent and Kleenex gets blown away. Here we go. Atlanta over towards the A zone. They'll stop the clock. Insight still in place. Cut down though from Laundry. Abizi can hold his ground and Scrap really can't do much from this position. He's completely stuck and isolated. Now low on HP and Selium Semtex will get the job done. I don't know if the second tick got fully captured, but may not make much of a difference. Phase still making a statement. Yeah, you're walking away with attacking rounds, especially the first round with no trophies and some in your back pocket that initial a push was shut down but atlanta phase is so damn good that they go for it again and find at least success for one segment 
As we take a look at the replay in these final moments, Sip is always somehow, some way, getting it done. Puts himself in a position to find that trade onto Insight, but then works his way knowing that at least one player is coming off spawn, finds a second kill, and then has a third player absolutely one shot. So Atlanta phase only walk away with five seconds, but you walk away with an attack on a map like Invasion, you're basically calling game. And your superstar Kleenex has yet to tally. Hello! Elimination. No, sorry. No phone service here in Toronto, apparently, right now, <laughs> Jay. No one's answering the hello call. First stick of progress towards B. Also, finally, to come through. Sip around the back finds himself a double. And Kleenex, he gets himself his first kill, but he's in trouble. He really wants this first stick of progress. Pistol will not win him the gunfight, and Atlanta's defense is already back in place. And Ultra, you can just tell that they're playing a little bit scared. They didn't even attempt to go over towards A because they know Atlanta Bays are shooting a little bit different. So far in this series, we're trying to complete over towards me. That first segment is not even done. And now Atlanta Faze know exactly where all the pressure's coming in. They have crossfires galore. You still have a couple attacks in your back pocket to contest it. That's another three dead in the feed. Ultra Bro. are having no breathing room. I can't, I mean, they don't look like they're even equal to any sort of the task here. Wow. I mean, what do you even say off of this? I mean, do you just look at phase of being just an untouchable squad in this major is it just the fall off from toronto's being exposed I, I don't know we'll let the flank debate over that for the next two hours after this one's over ultra still involved though over towards the b zone first stick of progress will we'll finally get locked and they've done well to reduce the life lead just a touch but there's still only 30 seconds left in the clock and atlanta continue to find kills and there's only 30 seconds left and i'm pretty sure simp hasn't even moved all spawn yet Oh, he was calling in a cruise missile. So they are trying to close up this damn round here. Second segment doesn't even get complete, but you still got a couple players trying to contest it all the way to the very end. It's going to fall into the hands of Draza. Wins one gunfight through top broken, but the pinch is going to be there. So Ultra, even with 14 seconds left, still have an opportunity to extend this game clock. There is still wind condition built in in some form, but it feels desperate and it feels like a stretch to say the least. More wall bang shenanigans trying to get through for selling, but the extra 60 seconds are going to be added. It's only a four life gap, but the, I think the bigger thing here is there's only 14 lives. How do you use that to get an extra tick, if not two, over towards the A zone? Oh, but this is a good start. You find three kills through the middle of the map, and now you're forcing Simp out of his position to make sure he's watching or at least assisting his teammates to watch the cross over towards the safe point. 50 seconds left on the game clock. Ultra had to make this one count because they only have one to two more good pushes at the safe point. Yeesh, what a oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Simp, are you kidding me? And now all of a sudden, Ultra are kind of stuck over towards ASD Alley. And that's enough for Simp to pop up, try to take a gunfight. Will not work out quite well. But down to 35 seconds. 12 lives for Ultra. Have to find a way to get across this laundry position that Draws is currently locking down. And, ooh, he does kind of give away his life. So Scrap will find that elimination. Leaves Cell kind of on an island by himself. But he pushes into his own stun. That will be enough to find one. Not quite the second. Kleenex keeps the play alive. Now Abizi next one in. Abizi's here. He's doing a great job of playing his life to perfection. Now Insight just finished getting the kill. He's going to be through back gas. Abizi knows his position. And you take care of him, you're going to secure the round. And Atlanta FaZe now find themselves up 2-0 in the series, up 2-0 in the control, and also up two segments. So if anything gets a little bit scary, they basically guarantee themselves defense in round five. Yeah. One tick advantage the moment that second tick from their first offense, by the way. Wasn't sure if it got locked, but in that replay, we saw it definitely did not. So the three ticks for Ultra keeps them in the conversation, if only just barely, considering the fact that they do find themselves down majorly. As Atlanta Fazer are putting together a speed run any percent right now, it feels like, versus Toronto Ultra in this series. And you can just think in the back of your mind, like, what Draws is thinking in his mind. Where is Scrappy? Where is Scrappy? He's right in front of you, but he ain't really doing much. The whole Toronto Ultra roster ain't really playing so far in this series, but backs against the wall sometimes where you perform the best. Because they are now forced to do the Ultra Mega Reverse Sweep. Versus a team like Atlanta FaZe, and they already know we're up by segments. We're just going to go to B, and they find all the kills. Like, hello? Yeah, I mean, the mind games, Jay. After the first hit towards A is unsuccessful in their first offense, they pull it off the second time. Ultra come out of spawn and hard stack the middle of the map, and all of a sudden, it's a B focus. And Atlanta read the rotation near perfectly. Two minutes and 22 seconds on the clock to get over to A, and Draza's not losing gunfights inside a freezer against SMGs. I mean, it's just that kind of day. Yeah, it's just there they have Call of Duty so far. 
And I don't know if the scoreboard is still broken, but I know for sure Kleenex definitely yeah, picked up a kill. But Atlanta phase working their way up to the map. Currently find themselves up by two lives, but they may they are maintaining a lot of mid-map control. Currently have DVD, currently have Cafe. So if you are Toron Ultra, you have to make these kills count. Yeah, well done here from Envoy. Reclaims control over towards Cafe. A little bit of an extension through it. Beasy with the read. Gosh, he has to be the hardest kill in the CDL right now. He has just been so finessy. Read the info, get out of there. A little bit of a poking prod. Thanks for asking. Oh my goodness, Kleenex does beat up a sip right there to follow up, and it turns into a two for two exchange. One life lead for Atlanta phase, but a minute has already been taken off the clock by the ultra defense. Now you just have to continuously hold on and fight out of your base at that as well, because Atlanta phase continuously every single time are already in your spawn. At the iron up, clutch up on these fights. No one's going to be near the point. Atlanta phase currently have a lot of cafe control. They're trying to eliminate these players through back tank before they can execute a cross. Selium unfortunately dies on the cross, but a BZ's in. And look at the play. All the focus from the front and Sim perfectly times his hit from behind. Trades decent here for Atlanta. Hello. Oh my goodness, Straza over the top. Now he's got laundry control. The read up close and personal and it's finally scrapped. Maybe the only words he's been able to have here in rebuttal to what Draza's put together. But the defense for Ultra sustains and survives this hit over towards A. The second tick not fully locked. Oh my god, this guy just makes it look so damn easy. 25 and 18, another clutch two piece of the middle of the map. But there's only 45 seconds left. So you have to get a move on it if you are Atlanta phase. And now with a couple players from Atlanta dropping, Sip now knows I have to take my time. I have to yeah, allow absolutely. my teammates to get back into this play before I can make a play. Trying to read the intel first. Stun does not land, so simple to use that as a chance to reposition. Catches Envoy on the re -right back into rugs. Things are looking polished, and now Simp goes to the high ground. Trying to scout things over the backside of the A zone. His teammates working to clear out mid-map, and I think Cell just had seen Insight dive on in towards rugs. Yeah, seems to be that case. He's on the hunt. Shots are good. Now it's over to the back for Simp on four in a row. Can we get some kills here if you're all trying? Oh, yes, you can. Kleenex, a key double. Leaves Simp by himself, but he could stop the clock. And look at the spawns for Ultra. They're so far away. And he kills a big kill here for Sid. As the rest of his teammates try to get over towards the water side. Sip still alive. Not quite able to get the second tick of progress. Ultra will get back in and survive the round to see another. And I'm not going to lie. Ultra really lucky that Sip didn't have a, a trophy system in his back pocket. Because he was getting hit by nades and stuns. He was even able to find a kill to earn himself a cruise missile before falling. And at least if you're Ultra... You secured the defensive round. Now, I don't know how many segments they are down. They allowed at least four to go in favor of Atlanta phase there. But obviously, if you want to force the round number five, you are forced to win this attacking round. Just have to figure out a way to man maneuver your way over towards A. Because every single time Atlanta phase are not really giving up that B point. You might think it's going to be really easy to extend that time for two yeah. minutes over towards A. But Atlanta phase every single time are contesting you all the way to the very end. And this is the thing is Ultra need to find a way to win this offense. And if they want round five defense, they would have to do it, I believe, Man. on every tick of progress. And off the get-go, once again, FaZe just so strong off their break off. Kleenex definitely back into the mix here after the 0-9 start. Now 12-18. and 18. Shots versus Zabizi, though. I mean, can anyone kill this guy in a, a face-up 1v1 gunfight? I mean, he has just been so different, this major. It's just 150 HP, Atlanta phase is diff. Like, yeah, these guys are able to maneuver out with their life, but that's a little bit longer than you probably expect them to, and they just do it to perfection. That's another three dead, make it all four in the feed. Now all of Ultra trying to fight out of their spawn. Scrap at least wins a huge one-on-one -on -one through mid-dark to allow his teammates to push up towards the point. But for how long? Because you still have a couple players from Atlanta phase contesting from the front, and now also Draza working on the pitch. And it looks like Draza's position has been made aware by this ultra offense. Selium up top, not going to be able to get dealt with. Scrap is on the hunt, and that is just an overheating over child you've ever seen. So now Insight just left to his own devices around the zone, and yep, that's just not going to lead to too much. Man, that's a moment of frustration right there, I think. Scrap, yeah, he's playing well, but that was an overheat moment for sure. And now there's only 25 seconds left, and you're forced to either push up through the B Street or locate where Draza is to try to overextend over towards A. And if you decide to do that, that's when Sip can invest that cruise missile. This might be 3-0, and it's going to be done in 15 seconds out. Sure feels that way. Ultra left at mid-map. And the cruise missile will surely pause any potential hit. Does take Simp out of the equation himself. And interestingly enough, actually, 
because of how the kills come through, Ultra's gonna get a pretty good headway over towards A. Two players here, one on, one watching the cross, phase spawning a bit deeper out, so a chance for Ultra, but again, this is desperation, and backs are definitely facing walls right now. Yep, you better hope those trophy systems are at least still there, because those tacks are gonna get thrown, the numbers are better in favor for Atlanta phase, but they know we can close up the game right here. We just have to find these trades onto the point, but Hold they on. can't find Hold any. On. Ultra with 2.4, they have tried to extend this game, and they're able to do so with a great play over towards A. Yeah, two players are already over towards the B zone now all of a sudden. So Simp gets one kill off the exit. Now he's quickly trying to make his way back over, and that is a brilliant decision. Catches the one player on the zone. Kleenex still just holding his life, finessing Abizi, waiting for the assistance to come back through, but they know that there was one player left over towards eight. It's all about where has Insight gone to since this rotation, and I believe they've seen him. Yep, they sure have. Four in the feed. Atlanta just need to find three more kills, and they win. Yeah, there's no more respawns. That's basically going to be GG. You know exactly where the rest of Toronto Ultra are going to be coming from, and with only 35 seconds left, Atlanta phase are going to be able to 3-0 Toronto Ultra again, two times in a row now. These guys are just the top dogs. And no one's coming close, maybe with the exception being the optics matchup where it was four very tight maps. This one, anything but. 251 27, <laughs> six to one, three to one, and Draza just going old school. Pick up the camera. Let me tell you something one time. Actually, two, three, four times at this point. <laughs> <laughs> just based on how Draza's gone off about it, but. Wow, that is a statement and an eye-opening experience here in terms of how Major 3 is looking. Yeah, Johnson picked up that camera. He said, great game, guys. You guys played a great game. Unfortunately, today we were just a better roster. You know, no cussing, nothing, no bad words or anything. Traza is one hell of a good player and a great teammate, great competitor as well. But Atlanta phase overall, man, that was an absolute beatdown, Alan. From start to finish, we're talking about a six-star where they needed to show adjustments after the loss versus Optic Texas. They win by 120. Yeah. The Rio search and destroy. Last time they matched up, it went all the way to around 11. This time it goes to around 7. And then you play an invasion control where so far control on the season is going in favor of Atlanta phase, but the way that they got this one done was an absolute beatdown. Do you take a look at the damage? 7,500 out of sin. That is honestly insane work right there out of the young man. We don't know how many his total kills were, but we also know he won non trade. <laughs> Come on. One time for Sip. Good gravy. Yep. I think uh, I saw Easy Max tweet when we were on break. I think his words were, we've got a big one, a little three, and a very bottom eight. <laughs> At the moment, it definitely is starting to feel that way with the masterclass put on by Atlanta. They get through off.